Hello and good day, everyone. My name is Darlena Birch, MBA, RDN, and most importantly, public health dietitian. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I discuss U.S. federal nutrition programs, the important role they play in ensuring the health and well-being of all Americans, and how public health dietitians work tirelessly to support these amazing programs. All views expressed on this channel are my own and do not represent the opinions of any entity whatsoever with which I have been, am now, or will be affiliated. I'm going to dedicate the next few episodes to talking about women who had major impact on U.S. federal nutrition programs because I feel like historically speaking, there's a lot of focus that's placed on men. And while there wasn't as much representation Presentation historically with women, there are women in history who have been able to contribute significantly farther back than I think many of us realize. Today's episode is titled Remembering Miss Poverty, Molly Orshansky. Molly Orshansky was an analyst for the Social Security Administration and she played an instrumental role in developing the U.S. federal poverty thresholds. I briefly mentioned her in my episode, The Federal Poverty Level, and as a reminder, the federal poverty threshold is an economic measure used by federal benefits and programs to decide whether the income level of an individual or family qualifies them to participate. Born on January 9, 1915 in New York City, New York to Ukrainian immigrants, Molly was one of seven daughters. Although her father worked hard at a number of different jobs, Molly and her sisters grew up poor. In her own words, the family could barely make ends meet, and Molly recalled being with her mother and standing in relief lines to get surplus foods. She was later quoted as saying, if I write about the poor, I don't need a good imagination. I have a good memory. I also want to make a note that Molly's experience growing up poor gave her firsthand experience at how it is possible to work full time and still be poor. The first in her family to graduate both high school and college, Orshansky graduated in 1935 with an AB, which is just another term for BA in mathematics and statistics at Hunter College in New York. At the time, many career opportunities in universities were largely closed to women and as a result, Orshansky pursued a career in government. Orshansky began her career at the New York Department of Health as a statistical clerk. In 1936, she accepted a position as a junior statistical clerk for the U.S. Children's Bureau in Washington, D.C. She later held high level statistical jobs at the New York City Department of Health, the U.S. National War Labor Board, and the U.S. Wage Stabilization Board. She also worked as a family economist and later as a food economist at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. It was during her work at USDA that she became familiar with the food plans and the food survey that she would later use to develop her poverty thresholds. As a family economist from 1945 to 1951, Orshansky conducted research in family consumption and levels of living. In 1948, Orshansky and a colleague were responsible for responding to letters from members of the public asking how they could make ends meet on their existing income in the face of rapidly rising prices after World War II. The pair would send pamphlets about preparing a family budget and about planning low-cost and moderate-cost meals using USDA's food plans, thus showing that Orshansky was working with USDA food plans at least 15 years before she developed her poverty thresholds. In 1958, Orshansky joined the Social Security Administration as a social science research analyst for the Division of Program Research, which would eventually become the Office of Research, Evaluation, and Statistics. Two years later, Orshansky would work on the issue of poverty measures. Her work continued in 1963 with an SSA research project on the effects of poverty on children, for which she developed poverty thresholds to measure the risk of income inadequacy among different groups of families. She first published her findings in July 1963. With President Lyndon B. Johnson's declaration on his war on poverty in 1964, a new interest in measuring just how many people were in poverty and how those numbers changed from year to year was generated. Meanwhile, the Council on Economic Advisors adopted a simple poverty standard classified individuals with less than $1,500 in annual income as poor and families with less than $3,000 in annual income as poor. So let me just tangent really quickly and talk about the CEA and who they are. The CEA is an agency within the Executive Office of the President and is charged with providing the President objective economic advice on the formulation of both domestic and international economic policy. The Council bases its recommendations and analysis on economic research and empirical evidence, using the best data available to support the President in setting our nation's economic policy. So now I'm going to go back to our story. Outreach at the Council measure would categorize a large family with children whose income was just over $3,000 as not poor, while a couple with no children and an income of just under $3,000 would count as poor, Orshansky set to expand her thresholds to all family sizes and ages. Both of her thresholds and the analysis based on them were published in her best-known article, Counting the Poor, Another Look at the Poverty Profile in January 1965. Orshansky's poverty thresholds were much more detailed than the CEA's measures, taking into account family size and composition. Although the lower for two sets of thresholds produce an aggregate number of poor similar to that of the CEA's analysis, Orshansky's thresholds categorize an additional 4 million children as poor. The Office of Economic Opportunity adopted Orshansky's thresholds as its working poverty measure in May 1965. These thresholds were subsequently adopted officially throughout the federal government, and Orshansky herself 
became more widely known as an expert, testifying before Congress and commissions on numerous occasions. This level of visibility was so unusual for a woman at that time that even a congressman remarked on it when hearing her testimony. In 1965, Orshansky received a Commissioner Citation Award from SSA for her creative research and analytical work. In 1976, Orshansky received the Distinguished Service Award from the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare for her leadership in creating the first nationally accepted measures of income adequacy and applying them diligently and skillfully to public policy. Orshansky's analysis set the model for decades to come for the manner in which poverty and anti-poverty policy and programs would be analyzed in the United States and elsewhere. Orshansky has been cited and recognized in poverty research and measurement in Europe, Latin America, Asia, and Africa, as well as by many international organizations. In 1982, Orshansky retired from SSA after a government career that lasted more than 40 years. In December 2006, she died at the age of 91. Her development of the poverty thresholds was a major contribution to American public policy, providing a means for identifying the groups in our society with the least resources. Orshansky's thoughtful analysis of the poverty population began a tradition, providing information on the hardships faced by families with children, the elderly, and other vulnerable groups. Numerous researchers have followed her example by conducting similar analyses and drawing policy implications from them. To this day, Orshansky's poverty thresholds remain a major feature of the architecture of American social policy. Thank you for joining me today. If you like what you see, please smash the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, you are your own best advocate. Feed your body well, nourish your soul, nurture your mind, and nutrify your spirit. Remain true to yourself and never forget that every second forward is another opportunity to be a better version of your past self.